that are often portrayed as everything that is wrong with modern day football. Um, and it was similar again a few weeks ago when Vladimirovich was sacked. The outcry was as swift as it was informed. How dare they part company with someone who had uh, been negative with players like Ismail Assar and Troy Deeney and not got the best of them and meant that um, return to the Premier League was done looking unlikely. Meanwhile, their Italian owner, Gino Porzo, was branded a short-term thinker, a man who ruefully sacks managers without consideration and stacks his clubs with an army of foreign loanies. Yet nothing could be further from the truth, and this ignorance has tarnished Watford on too many occasions and for far too long. Pozo is an owner many sides would like to have. He is at the club's training ground virtually every day, engaging in conversations with coaches, players and staff. Does he make mistakes? Of course, but nobody doesn't. Uh, since his family brought the club in July 2012, the club has been transformed, almost unrecognisably, on and off the pitch. The Hornets were financially on their knees when the Pozo family paid £500,000 to take Watford off Lawrence Bassini. They then spent £10 million clearing the club's debt to ensure Watford didn't go into administration. That act immediately got fans on side. The club has been saved. The next ambition of the Italian family was for it to soar. Watford's owners decided Sean Dice wasn't the man to lead the revolution and let him go. It was seen as harsh as the Championship club finished 11th uh, with a squad mainly uh, made up of academy players, free transfers and loan signings. But the Pozos introduced a new structure of the club, one Dice wouldn't have wanted to work under. It was more European and had been effectively for many years at Syria, a side Udinese, which the Italian family had owned since 1986. The structure remains to this day. Watford do not have a manager, they have a head coach. That makes the difference uh, and it has allowed the club to grow despite changing head coaches uh, millions of times, let's be honest. Pozo isn't a man who often gives interviews, particularly with the English press, but he did sat down with Football Whispers editor in November 2012 uh, for an in-depth discussion and views on head coaches are particularly relevant. If you're looking at long term, especially in a smaller term club, you want to retain as much knowledge on how to recruit a player as possible. If they only give that to a manager, then once the manager leaves, he leaves with all that knowledge. It is not the club's knowledge. We really like to have a stable structure, which means we need to be involved directly in the process for looking for the best players. That does not mean the manager can't participate in the process, but it should be run by people who work on the organisation. In order for a long-term commitment of this project, we need people to be involved. What's it easier to retain your manager if you're Manchester United? In a small club, the manager will eventually get a better offer or will leave. At that point, you don't know what to lose uh, or all the knowledge just because one guy has left the club. It's the desire to retain knowledge, which means the head coach is dispensable at Watford. Is that ideal? No. It's arguably... Why uh, managers like Marco Silva were keen to speak to Everton back in November. The Portuguese uh, back in the day was a cog in a well-oiled machine at Vicarage Road and not even a particularly big one. He wanted more but Silva knew what he was getting himself into uh, was a bad job just like all the managers since and most recently Vladimir Rivic. Every head coach that had gone before this lot uh, would accept they had uh, tools to work with and it worked for the likes of Slavisa Jukanovic and Kike Sanchez Flores. Why they weren't kept on beyond the transcribed simple results, Jukanovic failed to agree a new deal and his deal expired. A break clause in Sanchez Flores' contract was activated after one season because performances had deteriorated and he wasn't giving young players a chance. Um, Delve into recent history and the claim that Pozo is a man who changes manager is further uh, disproved. Gianfranco Zola was in charge for almost 18 months before resigning after a poor run. He wasn't sacked. His replacement was going against the Pozo club's data analysts and had fallen out with the players. So he resigned. He wasn't sacked. Oscar Gracia was brought in but for help reason meant he resigned after just 27 days. He wasn't sacked. His assistant... uh, was promoted but lasted eight days as it immediately became clear he wanted to be a manager instead of a head coach. So let's tally up. One of ten head coaches employed by Watford since their takeover. Uh, Ten 
have been sacked mid-season. That's hardly the telltale sign of an owner who enjoys wielding the axe at the first opportunity. Pozo, alongside Chairman and CEO Scott Dukesbury, made strategic and calculated decisions on the pitch that resulted in what could quickly establish themselves as a Premier League club. And they'll look through that again this season. And sacking Vladimir Ivic is probably the best thing to do it. What for a club that many should aspire to be like? That's the uncomfortable truth for many football fans. Hey okay guys, that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Remember to follow me on Twitter. Link in the description below for daily football news. And subscribe to my channel on the screen right now. That would be greatly appreciated. Thanks very much for watching. Peace.